Muchas gracias a ustedes. Es un gran placer estar aquí para celebrar el Día Internacional del Intérprete de Conferencias y realmente un orgullo estar aquí para compartir con todos algo de algunas nuevas ideas que tengo sobre el futuro. Y ahora, eh, aprovechando la posibilidad de hablar en mi lengua materna, voy a pasar al inglés y también deseo mucha suerte a, la in a las intérpretes porque me han dicho que hablo muy rápido. <laughs> so, colleagues, new technologies, friend or foe? Well, I have a dream. My dream is that we don't have to ask this question 10 years from now. My dream is that we can all see technology as something that can assist us with our work, as something that we're not afraid of being replaced by, but rather as something that we can all embrace, something that we can learn to use so that we can do our jobs a little bit better or even a lot better. My dream is that technology will be opening doors to our having more tools in our arsenal, more opportunities, and yes, more challenges, as some of the previous speakers have said. So the question is, of course, how did we get here and how do we get there? So 10 years from now, we're not being asked the question of whether technology is a friend or a foe. Let's step back. Tony was so kind as to take us back 101 years to the earliest days of conference interpreting, the ILO 1919, where we saw just how simplistic the technology was, really using telephones, uh, something that was basic, just a phone line, no booths, nothing. Fast forward a few years, the Nuremberg trials, we had the first time that interpreting was being used for multiple languages for long periods of time, uh, and still yet, no booths, just a piece of glass uh, between the interpreters and what was going on in the room. Yet nevertheless, this was something that I like to call, and I think many people call, disruptive innovation. A real game changer, because we went from the consecutivists to a brand new model. Now, something that I think we lose sight of is that this didn't happen overnight. Rather, as Tony has said, we've seen gradual improvements. Uh, improvements in our equipment, improvements in our booths, improvements in our consoles, right? All of the things that we use in our daily life when we're working on site. We've gone from consoles that were very simplistic, from the phone systems that we heard about just a minute ago, to consoles that allow us to take relay to cover the 20 plus languages that are provided at the European Parliament where I often work. We've also gone to having the mobile infrastructure and uh, booths bringing screens into our booths as well. One thing uh, that we probably don't think about is the fact that often now we have a screen in the booth allowing us to see what is going on in the room. So incrementally, we've been seeing change. And I think on our side, we've started to bring our own devices into our booths, wherever those booths may be, be it a tablet, be it a computer, uh, be it your smartphone, uh, these devices are now helping us to do our work. Now I'd like to fast forward to about 10, 20 years ago to what I think was the second important moment of disruption for interpreting. But it wasn't only a moment of disruption for interpreting, it was a moment of disruption for the whole world. Uh, of course, I'm referring to the, the arrival, the birth of the internet, which made our work so much easier, which gave us access to materials, for example, making them much more available. Nowadays, if you're going to interpret a speaker who might be tricky to interpret like yours truly, you can simply go online, find a video uh, of them speaking and use it to practice. Nowadays, materials are sent to us via email. Uh, we don't have to lug around dictionaries. So technology, I think you would all agree with me, is already a friend. And I hope that we can take that and use that idea moving forward. Just a few other ways that technology can be our friend. We're sent documents before a conference. We can take our tablet, if you have one, stylus, and mark those up. Write in a few notes, write in a few translations in those slides that you have them uh, with you while you're on the road. Or 
you can search for things while you're in the booth. Think about that. 20 years ago, could you have searched within a document to find the page that people were referring to? Could you have put in the bookmarks in advance so when they start talking about that section you knew they were going to jump to, which is 30 pages into your document, in one click you get there? Could you have searched for a quotation in a document by just typing three letters? Or could you have searched your glossary and with just two, three letters, two, three characters, pulled up what you wanted to find in just a moment with incredible advantages of technology like incremental search, which means one character at a time, it's running a recursive search and finding what you're looking for. Or uh, not having to type accents or cases or anything like that while you're looking for something in your glossary. So that's where we are now. My dream, dear colleagues, is that this starts to become the new normal that we all have, that we all embrace. A new normal where we have terms at our fingertips, a new normal where we start collaborating even more with our colleagues. For example, on collaborative glossaries that we build together in advance of a conference. It's incredibly easy now with things like Google Sheets or glossaries that you share with a colleague upon arrival, where they can look things up in yours, you can look things up in theirs. Uh, ways that we could share a screen, a, a, a virtual canvas with a colleague if we're working at a distance and be able to jot them a note, highlight a passage for them, even if we're not in the same space. This is all possible. And what's coming soon, I think, is very inspiring. What's coming soon is speech recognition, for example but not speech recognition that's going to replace us. I don't think we're there, and I think there's still a long way to go before we get there. Instead, the cutting edge speech recognition that we have right now does things like pull terms, numbers, names out of a speech, so that as you're working and somebody, you know, rattles off 75,692, you don't have to use your brain power on that. You can have the screen put that up right in front of you so that you can keep moving on and doing what we do best, interpreting. So my dream, colleagues, is that technology doesn't replace us and that we not fear that it replaces us, but rather that technology make us just a little bit better in our work. Another thing that many of you will know me for is uh, tablets. Uh, some of you also know that we actually are just about to publish the Tablet Interpreting Manual. It's coming out in just a few hours right after this call. And if anybody's interested, a uh, little plug, we're just wrapping up our pre-launch sale. But anyways, tablets, I think, are something that are incredible because they can help us in a very small booth. We can pop them right there. They can help us. Uh, I've done research on this. They help us to look more professional. They help us to look things up while we're working. They help us to make annotations, for example, if they're drafting a text and you want to jot something down as you're going. Uh, and they help us to move between different modes. I don't know about you, but I regularly will work at an assignment where they'll go to a breakout group and then you go do chuchotage or you go uh, do some consecutive work. You can just pop off your keyboard, leave it in the booth, take your tablet with you and then use it right there right on your lap, looking very professional, doing your job. So colleagues, uh, another part of my dream is that I not be seen as crazy for saying these things, because I know that uh, it's bold. And my dream is that using technology not be seen as something so outside the box, but rather as something that we all can embrace. Now, how do we get there? I think it calls for a major paradigm shift, but now is a great time for paradigm shifts, frankly. A paradigm shift where we see technology as empowering us rather than technology as something that we should fear. Friend rather than foe. Now it starts with education. Uh, for example, our training programs for our budding interpreters, for our young colleagues, should all introduce technology right from the get-go. And our associations as well uh, have been putting on uh, an incredible wealth of webinars, of training programs that now allow us to connect with colleagues across the globe. I think that that is an unbelievable opportunity that technology provides to all of us. Uh, I think that professional development is essential, that we should all welcome it. And I don't mean professional development only about tech. I think professional development on all fronts can help us to do our jobs better, to keep learning constantly. And I just want to take a moment to thank all of the associations for all of the work that they're doing 
on this front. And I also think uh, that this crisis that we're all facing, you may have noticed that I haven't really discussed it, uh, but I just want to say that I see it as an opportunity, an opportunity for us to seek out new training, to have more time to learn, to get to know other colleagues across the globe. Um, and you may know that we have put on so far 19 free webinars on all sorts of tech topics. So I'd encourage you, if you're interested, I can't possibly do them all justice in uh, just 10 minutes, but there's all sorts of stuff to learn. And so, um, yes, I'm not going to continue talking about the elephant in the room. I don't know what the next 10 years will look like. I think, however, that they may well provide many new opportunities, opportunities for new clients, new meetings, hybrid meetings, as we've heard about. Right now, we're still very much in the teething stages. So let's go along, learn, learn how to do remote, see if the platforms get better, help the platforms get better, help each other get better. In conclusion, colleagues, I just want to tell you that my dream is that we all seize this opportunity, that we seize this opportunity for professional development, that we go out, take advantage of training that's out there, and that 10 years from now, when we're talking about technology on International Conference Interpreting Day, we not ask if technology is a friend or a foe, but rather we consider how much it has helped us over the last decade and how much it can continue to help us in our work in the decades to come. Thank you.